It breaks my heart that people think they're learning Torah listening to this guy. Other people that tell you that Geinom is not real, like this Rasha Merusha, Yonatan Alevi from California, one of the biggest menuvalim in the history of mankind. I think Titus is jealous of him. He spends hours and hours of his time, instead of being a rabbi of Akila, he spends hours and hours of his time spreading all types of comments, making fun of either myself, of Rav Mizrahi, or anybody that's actually halfway real. And he has shiurim, he has a shiur on the internet that says that anyone that tells people that a mechalel shabbat, mot yumat, that Hashem kills the mechalel shabbat or punishes you for making sins, it's shtuyot, it's nonsense. And he gives you some source of a rabbi that said it in a certain way that he's completely manipulating. But now he has a new thing. I forgot about this clown already. This guy is already years ago. But it came up in news the other day. Why? One of, one of my students from there says to me, Listen, Kvod I, I have a little bit of a problem. He goes, Why? He goes, I have a few friends that are much more religious than me. You know, they've been religious for a while. He doesn't realize what, what it really means to be religious. I have a few friends that are much more religious than me. And they go to some rabbi and they tell him, Listen, I'm going to send you pictures of the food I'm buying at the non kosher supermarket. And you tell me if it's kosher or not, if I'm allowed to eat it. Is this allowed? Said, Under no condition is this allowed, unless he works for the food company. And he knows exactly what they put and what every ingredient, when they say B something, Z something, A something, special ingredient, good ingredient, bad ingredient, natural ingredient, unless he knows what that ingredient really means, there's no such thing as just saying this is kashel. Who is it? Yonatan Levi, Shem Reshaim Yerkav. He has his students, miskenim, poor people, going directly to Geinom for his stupidity. Why? They go to non-kosher supermarkets, and they buy whatever they want, they send them a picture. They take a picture with their phone, so this good. Yeah, yeah, good. Kasher, kasher. Why? It's tomatoes. It's tomatoes. What's wrong with tomatoes? Well, what about the, the pork that's in it, maybe? What about the other non-kosher stuff that's in it? What about the bugs that they mix in between? Is that okay? The bug, you know, the fly, the cockroaches, all the stuff they put together to put some sauce in there. That's okay also. And he has now, he's not even, this is not, this is not even rumors. You could say, oh, it's less rumors, it's less shonara. No, no, he has a shoe about this. He has a shoe on the internet of how he does this. He says, no, we're leaving orthodoxy. We're leaving orthodoxy. Well, no, no. All these kosher bodies, the OU and the ORB and the K and the U, all that stuff, that's just for people who don't know Allah. That's just for people who don't know Allah. I actually had to waste almost 25 minutes of my time listening to the clips of this clown. Mamas, take the Torah and completely destroy every part of it. Saying he knows Allah. He learned next to big rabbis. Yeah, he sat next to them. Doesn't mean he learned from them. But these are the type of clowns we have in the world today. It's bathroom Torah. He spends hours and hours a day running a page on Facebook, just bad mouthing me, Rav Mizrahi, or anybody else. Now I've never I don't even think I've ever mentioned his name before. But the reality is this clown has been around for a long time and I forgot about him. But it's, I see that it shows that the, unless you expose these people, the damage continues to grow. Why? Because unfortunately we're in a generation of naive people that as soon as they see a kippah and a beard and maybe a bekneset, they say, oh, tzaddik, they kiss his hand. They say, hello, uh, kvod arav, they call the person. Kvod arav, kvod arav, everybody's kvod arav. Tzaddik balair. A righteous person comes to the town. People don't have, they have no concept of what it means to be a real Talmud Chacham. First requirement of you getting a yore yore, a real smicha, being even a, called, a, considered a rabbi without a smicha, doesn't make a difference, is having Yirat Shamayim. Having Yirat Shamayim. No Yirat Shamayim, Gemara Maseret Moed Katan says you're not allowed to learn from him. 
A person doesn't have Yirat Shamayim, you're not allowed to learn from him. It doesn't make a difference how many degrees he has and how many books he wrote. It makes no difference. He has no Yirat Shamayim. It's a sin from the Torah to learn Torah from him. Go learn math, maybe. Learn uh, physics. That you can learn from anybody. You can learn from a monkey if you want. Torah, you're only allowed to learn from somebody who has Yirat Shamayim. No Yirat Shamayim? How do you know if he has Yirat Shamayim? First and foremost, you can tell if somebody has Yirat Shamayim by simply what, the, what he says. If everything he says makes you feel cozy inside, it's no, not a good sign. Why? You're supposed to leave every single shield, whether it's five minutes or five hours, with questioning in your heart about what you need to do right now to fix yourself. If you leave the shoe feeling like a superhero, there's a problem with the shoe. 